I'm talking about um, how I use Blender at work and a bit um, how I use Blender for my hobby. At work, um, I don't have to do much um, with animations and stuff like that. Um, it's most about press photographs and um, images that we use on our website. So I'm going to start with um, yeah, some work I do for our press photos. And this is something um, um, that is very common. Um, our photographer is using a prototype and um, shoots a photo of it. And it's not at this, um, yeah, this um, state of the prototype is not like it will be in the final version. And um, so I am told to do some um, yeah, changes to it. And I can, I prepared it. Ah, because my machine is very slow. So this is the, the source photo. And yeah, normally I have to do some color corrections, uh, change the TV screen and the color of the cover in everything in Photoshop. And then we come to a point where um, I have to do um, some labels to be set on the cover. And, set, and that's where Blender steps in. So I, so I just load um, this photo as a background image and prepare this, these labels inside um, a Blender scene. And then I can very easily set the camera so it fits to the um, camera setting in the real photo. And if, um, yeah, and now I can play and change the, the labels in real time. It, um, it's always very complicated to do this in Photoshop. It, I know um, Photoshop is changing in the new version, but um, using Blender for this is much more comfortable to me. Sometimes there are last minute changes. Um, yeah, if there's something like this, I can just enter it there, render this layer, go back to Photoshop and get it there. And this looks, um, yeah, to me, I think this is the best solution. It looks uh, much better um, compared to stuff I would fake in Photoshop. It's easier this way, and I could use it in other angles. Um, do, you, do you hear what he's asking? OK. Um, yeah, there are a few. Um, there are scripts to do these, um, to do these settings. But um, I don't use them. I got used to, um, yeah, to do it manually, and it's not always correct. Um, sometimes I'm, I, I just um, decide what solution um, is the fastest one. Sometimes it's not correctly, but I, I don't care. I, um, um, yeah, move the fonts a bit. I try to keep um, the um, the object as as it is, so I can reuse it in other settings. But um, yeah, if it's it takes too much time. I choose the quick way most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's another example that is quite similar to that. Yeah, it's um, this where um, yeah, the photographer took the prototypes and uh, shot a photo of them, but they are looking dead because uh, nothing is on their displays. And so I've, I took them. And made a few changes. It's um, the, the blue phone on the right is not um, yeah, it's not blue enough. It has to become a bit brighter and a bit higher. The prototype was um, too small, so I did that in Photoshop. And um, 
And then the, I just did the same thing. Um, used this background image and made some very simple objects that were um, curved in a way that fits to the photo or bent. And I painted um, the displays. You know, I prepared them here for both devices. And yeah, it's a process. I'm doing um, some kind of display for it because this is not the actual display of the device um, ports there. And so I decided um, that we keep the photograph, but um, just use a rendered version of the um, panel, which I did in Jeffrey. I'm going to load this into Photoshop. And so there were a few preparations. I um, retouched the, um, the fonts there and um, replaced them by a rendered version called Fritz Lab, where we um, provide users with um, beta versions of our firmwares. And yeah, it's like in a lab. And we chose this um, Erlenmeyer flask as a logo for this lab. And it was quite funny to use the fluids on it. Another example of what um, I sometimes do is quick, um, yeah. If I if I just um, I'm looking for a logo for something or an icon. Um, it's sometimes very quick to do this um, in Blender using curves because you can easily duplicate them, use them in another formation in, in the next image, and you can easily um, switch through these um, different versions by just um, yeah, moving your camera. This works pretty well for most of the stuff. And I um, can then render out um, a quick series of every version and um, give them to the um, yeah, manager that decides which logo to take, and he can then choose his version. And this time it was yeah, this one that we came up with. And um, yeah, it really speeds up my workflow that I can um, change them so easily and do this in Blender. It works um, much quicker than for me than doing it in Inkscape or some software like that. Yeah, so after this year's um, CBIT, my desk looked like this with all the photos and stuff we prepared. This is a, yeah, the prototype of the device was already available then. Sometimes I just have to do um, very quick um, teaser graphics for a website that um, have to uh, be produced in uh, one hour or something like that, and we only use them for a week or so. So everything has to be very quick, and they are they are in very low resolutions. For yeah, a golden Fritz box or stylized ABM logo. Yeah, this one was um, an audio driver for a USB device or a collection of all CBIT stuff. You've seen this before. And the new Fritz Mini. Uh, and here's the Eco logo. And to another renderer of the Fritz Box Freer. <laughs> Save your euros. And yeah, sometimes very simple animations. Yes, yeah, but they're, they're far away and very, 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 very simple. So, uh, yeah, um, looping is very interesting if you put something on a website, always. Well, this one is using the coins um, and just um, parenting them to a wave 
inside Blender and rendering them from the front. So I just used um, the vertex position of a pre-calculated wave was the easiest way to get this effect. Now it's pulsating stuff or yeah, security. We often use the lock for this. And this was a very early one for an antivirus feature. Yeah, these have to be produced very quickly, so it's um, some. It's very different from what you see if you, if they show you um, complex animations. Another thing I use it for is um, pie charts. Very simple, but if. Um, my colleagues showed me the pie charts that come out of their Windows versions of Excel, and um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't very really good for um, yeah the presentations. So I did a very simple Python script. That's it. Um, yeah, so I can, I just came out with some syntax um, to use, and I can define the percentage and the, um, the size of the pieces and the colors, which um, I got some prepared colors that we use and run the script, and it throws out, out a pie chart. I can then rotate it in a way that I like it and render it and come up with something like this with a subtle shadow and um, it looks smoother than the Excel version. Yeah, works well. Now, sometimes um, I have to do uh, graphics for flash um, animations, which are, yeah. Most of the time, it is um, yeah, a 2D image rendered in a certain perspective and then just scrolled so you get an impression of um, yeah, a 3D scene. For example, this one, um, which is showing how easily um, a security or a, yeah, a, a wireless key can be transformed by just um, sticking in the client into the router, getting it out, it has the right key, and putting it into your notebook, and you don't have to type in the key. And so I rendered this image, and put it into Flash, and I'm just scrolling there, and this looks like Come on. Yeah, at least. Yeah, it looks that way. So, yeah. And that's okay. Because I have to keep the data size low for this online content. So, I just use a few pre-rendered images and scroll them to give an impression of 3D. What else have we got? Ah, it's called Weihnachtsfeier. That was a Christmas video that I produced in Blender, but I think my machine is too slow to get um, these textures in to Blender, so I skip this. Sometimes I, um, I'm using it for compositing. This is an example that um, happened two weeks ago, where our marketing department, they came up with, um, some qu with a question. We had a screensaver that was done in Flash, and they wanted to um, give this screensaver to a dealer um, that should be able to um, show it using a DVD player and a standard TV, no computer. And the problem is that um, 
I can show this. On TV screens, you've got um, yeah, a special issue because this, you can't rely on the size of your screen. Um, there's this, um, this is the way the screensaver looked. And if you look in the corners, our um, corporate logo is there and something else, um, everything in, in the corner areas. And if you show this on a TV set, it just got, uh, gets cut off at, at the corner. So we had to find an easy way to uh, rescale this. And that's where the, the compositor comes in. So I just took in the single frames of the animation, um, used the compositor to scale them down to the title safe area, and then um, quickly painted a, or quickly extended the background by smearing it um, in Photoshop to produce a single image as a background for this um, rescaled version, which comes in here. And it's just um, composited on top of the other one. Uh, uh, and so you've got a version that runs on TV screens. Yeah, everything is now inside the title save area and you can rely that the logo is shown. Yeah, this was um, the stuff I do um, yeah, at work, or uh, some examples. Um, there's um, some other stuff that I do, or that I use Blender for as a hobby. For example, some might know um, 3DNP, which is a um, yeah, fake 3D viewer that shows pre-rendered um, images. which looks uh, like this. They can be put on a website, and the images are just stored inside a path. And um, a JavaScript that interacts with um, your mouse movements can then flip through the images, giving you um, the idea that you um, just turn the object. I've got some examples. Yeah, and um, this just um, works for as many degrees as you like to render. You can turn the stuff upwards, downwards. Hmm. I think I need more memory on this machine. Yeah, and this, you can turn it. And it works yeah, independent from each other because it's just in, inserted um, using iframes on the side. I'd, um, and it's not only usable for rendered images. I took some photos um, this morning here. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, on my website, there's a um, English documentation of how, you, how to use this script. Um, um, some Polish user, he came up with a Polish tutorial lately, which they present on um, um, blender.pl. Yeah, and so you can also use photos to get this fake 3D. And it, um, it's very, um, yeah, this JavaScript is so simple that it runs on many platforms. I tested it on every um, browser that I was able to get my hands on, and um, lately also on the um, Opera browser on the Wii. And it runs there, and some people um, informed me that it's um, even running on their um, mobile phones, which is quite cool, I think. <laughs> Another hobby project um, that I came up with was, I called it 3D Pinner. It was when I saw a certain um, Nine Inch Nails video where they used um, this, I don't know how they call it, um, 
pin stuff on where you can push your hand into and yeah, I saw it. A pin toy, yeah. Something like this. And in this um, music video they um, like this. And I just used a Python script, or I made a Python script um, to import video images. And another Python script um, to just um, yeah, produce the geometry that you would like to change with the other script. So you can um, model one pin, use the first script um, to do um, yeah, thousands of copies of this pin in a layout that you decide, and afterwards um, you get your video stuff. Read, read intro into this and it moves it. Let's see if it works here. Yeah, for example, did I say hobby? I just stepped 10 frames forward. Yeah, and it, this machine is quite slow, it runs much better on a big machine. Yeah, and um, you come up with something like, ah, I, I showed you the source video. Which is something like, Yeah, this, it's rendered in Blender as well in a very small resolution. And then I use the um, brightness information of the pixels and I get something like this, hopefully. Ah. Damn. <laughs> it's shown here, but not on the, maybe I've got to use another player. The overlay is not. One last chance. Virtual up. Let's see. It is there. That's the effect. <laughs> I used um, some video material as well, where I just turned the light off <clears throat> and um, stepped in front of the camera. <laughs> because I just wanted to see if it works with real material. And it looks like this. It was the first try, so. I think I will return. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. If somebody is interested in this script, it's, yeah, you can tell me. Uh, what else have we got? Um, do I have to hurry or? Yeah.
Yeah, I did. I use Blender um, to render a few um, icons for a skin that I prepared for an for a Linux hand, game handheld that was made in Korea. It's called the GP2X, and yeah, I used simple 3D versions of the icons, rendered them, and made a skin. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Which was done very quickly and yeah. Yeah. Another thing was uh, yeah, two years ago at the Blender conference, this Jake character. <laughs> Last year, I prepared a version of, uh, yeah, just to try to use hair, um, which came out with funny results first. <laughs> but I found the settings, and I used uh, lots of curves to control it, and came up with something like this. Yeah, and the current um, project is just to play around with um, subsurface scattering. I did more, yeah, crazy character, which will be a manager. <laughs> is your boss a psychopath? Yeah, and that's it. Any questions? <laughs> Come on. Uh, the, the trick you did with um, the Internet Explorer and your animation yeah. with the pictures. Then the turning around in the, is all rendered out or something? Yeah. it's. Um, I can show you. Can you, can you show me the, you say a little bit of Java or something? Yeah. I want 